This comment comes from Daniel Garcia. And here's what he said. He commented four days ago. He says, with your YouTube channel, it doesn't affect your pockets. It doesn't really affect your everyday life, your success. So it doesn't really matter. It's every, it's every man for themselves. If all those people are removed, it's going to affect your job. It's going to affect your life. It's, and I'm pretty sure you're not still living. You're not still, you're not still living your everyday life. Life will find a way. It's not like every American person will end up with a shovel in the end. I will probably come up with some kind of technology, robot machinery to handle the missing labor. So I'm assuming he's talking about um, my take on immigration uh, and how, you know, this idea that they're going to deport 200,000 temporary status individuals from El Salvador. Uh, and, and he's like, well, oh, it doesn't matter. But it actually does matter. Because this ideal, so the president, the president said um, that, you know, we need to get, we need to get rid of all these illegals, we need to get them out of our country. And so my response, like, to be frank, beyond the fact that it's morally wrong and it's a stupid idea, right, beyond those things, like, let's talk about the fact that these 11 million people, live, live, individuals living in the shadows, they actually contribute to our economy quite a bit. So this idea that if we round up all 11 million individuals and kick them out of the country, that it's somehow going to make America better is a farce and a really bad ideal. So, Daniel, yes, you're right that, you know, not everybody's going to end up with a shovel. And yes, they'll create robots, but you'll never, ever take the human labor away from some of the work that we need in our economy. And this human labor is fulfilled by undocumented individuals in this country, period. We have another comment. This comment comes from, and this was on our MLK Day fail, which gave the president a failing grade for his MLK Day performance. This comes from Radical Greek Beard. MLK the communist deserves no praise. The man was a degenerate, and some of the commies who put him in power had him killed. I don't even know if I want to respond to your comment, um, Radical Greek Beard. Um, I don't really think, well, first, we are, first, MLK wasn't a communist. Second, um, I think his accomplishments speak for themselves, period. Um, and I'm not going to justify your comment with the response. Um, and why he died, I mean, I don't know. I think you have to ask the FBI that question. But I think his legacy will have far outlived his years on Earth. And it speaks to the fact that he... Um, I mean, it speaks to the fact that he worked really hard to create equity. Uh, and, you know, Greek, what is the, this Greek beard guy? Um, the, the other comment that I have for you is, remember, as MLK said, the arc of the history is long, but it bends towards justice. So there's that. This one is from Daniel. This is from, this is from Daniel. He says, I think deep down, we all knew, besides Trump's brainwashed base, that there that once the tax cuts were given to the corporations and working class would see no benefits. Trickle-down economics is non-existent. It all goes to the upper class. What Walmart did was wrong. Stri was wrong, nothing short of a PR stunt. They gave the workers a permanent raise um, and to the detriment of thousands of people and then said the raises were because of the tax cut. They took the American people for a true imbeciles. You are right. Yes. Daniel, thank you. You got what the message I was saying, because that's exactly what I was trying to say. They took us like we were stupid. Walmart thought we were stupid. We're not stupid. We're actually pretty smart, because everybody was like, wait a minute, Walmart. So yeah, you gave out bonuses, and yeah, you gave out raises, but then you fired a 1,000 people. You didn't even tell them, thousands of people. You didn't even tell them. Like People just showed up to work. And there was a sign in front of their Sam's Club store that said, sorry, we're closed. <laughs> Find jobs elsewhere. Hasta luego. Godspeed. Good luck. And then they went out and talked about how they're creating all the jobs. And Walmart wasn't the only company that was a bad actor, right? Because AT&T did the same thing. They said, oh, we're giving out bonuses. Before we do that, we're going to fire a thousand people. A couple, more than a couple thousand. So there's that. So this is, on, this is the chip video we did last week. 
uh, no, a couple weeks ago, and here's what she said. Shake my damn head. When a nation doesn't care about their own poor kids, the nation will split in half. But honestly, it felt, it, it honestly has felt like two different nations presided on the same soil ever since the sham artist started his presidential campaign. Remember how we all howled and laughed at the thought of the orange anus ever, ever running for president? I feel like we've, I feel like we've lived in a skewed reality ever since then. I think you're sort of right, um, Miss Divine Music Witch. Um, I don't like your name, but I think you're right in that we did, there was a time where Don, like Donald Trump, I gotta give him credit where credit is due. Like Donald Trump was so good at snookering America. Like first he snookered those 17 Republican candidates because none of them thought that Donald Trump was gonna be the nominee. And slowly but surely, he used his, you know, his nicknaming, his marketing skills to get them all. First, he had little Marco, lying Ted, hold the Bible high, and then he lies. And then, of course, his, the best name of them all, I got to give it to him, Crooked Hillary. That thing stuck so hard. Like, it literally stuck to Hillary like a tattoo on a biker's ass. And she just could not, because everything she did literally was just, well, told you she was crooked. Crooked Hillary, back at it again, and he, she couldn't get around it. And people didn't know what to think of President Trump because I think the Democrats, what we did is we threw too much stuff. We're like, oh, he's a philanderer. He's a bad businessman. He's unfit. He's crazy. We threw all this stuff, and none of it stuck because it was, we were throwing too much. We should throw one thing, like bad businessman, period. Or he's a philanderer, period. Or he's mentally unfit, period. We threw all the, we threw the kitchen sink at him. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw the kitchen sink at me, but she's still crooked. And everything the Clinton campaign did sort of just walked into them being crooked. And now he's the president. So I think she's sort of right. He laughed his way right into the White House. We'll see if he laughs his way out the White House. That we don't know. <laughs>